All right, I'm starting to think she might be cursed. Are you serious? Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John, and this is my boom lift. Are you seeing the problem here? In previous videos, I rebuilt the carburetor and got it running much better, but obviously, we've taken a few steps back. Great. Getting this engine to run right has turned out to be a oh. huge challenge, and I want to take you guys along for the ride. Kind of go through the thought process and all the little successes and failures along the way. So the primary issue is hard to start and then also it will stall a lot. So in spite of all my recent work on the carburetor, this thing's still not running right. Um, I think actually it's possible that something has gotten in the carb again from one of the fuel lines. So I'm gonna pull the carburetor yet again back in there real easy to get to and uh i actually have an ultrasonic cleaner that we're gonna gonna run it through and let's see what we can find on this i've gotten pretty good at taking this carburetor off not sure if that's a good thing or not Nice. Everything's still here. Man. Yeah, this thing's weird. Sometimes it'll run pretty well. A lot of times it's stalling again whenever you change it to platform. It, I tried adjusting like the low speed screw and stuff and I think that just made it worse. And I recently replaced the main fuel line going to the carburetor and I noticed that the old line had some like crud in it so I'm wondering if it didn't uh, didn't mess up my recent cleaning job. Yeah, it looks okay. Now well, that certainly wasn't clean. I'm not sure I want to run this choke through the cleaner. I know it had some rust in there. I may just take it off, actually. This is an automatic choke that opens when it gets hot. Yeah, I don't think I want to run that through because that is a little heating element down there. Hmm. This mechanism has always confused me. It's essentially a choke limiter that will not allow the choke to fully open. So there you can see how that prevents that from coming down any further. So that's so closed and then mostly open. The way it's built, there's no way to adjust it. It's fixed in place. With that removed, the choke fully opens and closes easily. see up in there that's just plugged this uh this does nothing at least i think it does nothing maybe that's supposed to move
I'll tell you, if I could pick this carburetor up for a hundred bucks or less, I would just buy a new one, put it on there, and that would be very worth it to know that my carburetor was good. But this carburetor is just shy of a thousand dollars. And there's no reason I shouldn't be able to get the carb running right. In fact, I'm I ran this thing through like four or five cycles in this ultrasonic cleaner. It's never been this clean since I've owned it. I am going to put just a touch of lubricant on these choke and throttle pivots. Spit it out, John. Use your words. That's as clean as I can get her. Let's throw her back on there. All right, let's see if this thing will start. So we want it on ground control, switch on, the ignition's on. Let's give it a rip. It just dies and that's what it's been doing it doesn't matter what I do to the low speed screw on the carburetor it just wants to die so then we come out to the platform if I start it yeah. dies again So if I step on the pedal, which puts it in a higher position as far as it's idling, it'll keep running. Maybe the governor. I think it's just trying to idle it at too low a speed. Because it will run like this and, and it'll function. But see, it's really choppy, it's smoking. So now if I let my foot up, dies again all right definitely need to do something just open the low speed screw a half turn let's see what that does okay let my foot off the pedal here Ooh, that did make a difference a little bit still struggling Maybe I need to open that a little more. Okay, you see all the cars? We have visitors. Yeah, so I tried this before and it made no difference. This definitely made a difference. So I am now two and a half turns out. And it seems to be running pretty well. Let me step on the pedal. And let off. Wow. Now see, the thing is, is right now, this is I've had it like this before. It's working. But then, you know, tomorrow I'll come back and try to use it and it won't work. And I just find that particularly frustrating. But right now, I'm thinking maybe cleaning that carburetor did the trick. All right, it's been a couple weeks. I've changed nothing. Really? Got plenty of fuel. Why, boom lift? Why?
incredibly hard to start. It's like it takes it a long time to get fuel. I can tell you I've tried starting fluid. It really does not seem to make much difference though. All right, we've properly warmed up. It's not smoking anymore. It sounds pretty good. The question is, is it gonna stall when I go to platform? No. Okay. So basically we just have a hard to start condition. Getting ready to do a cold start. Looking right down the throat of the carburetor. I can see that it's choked. This thing just cranks and cranks and cranks when it starts. Now, the way this carb is oriented, there's no way that the bowl could be leaking out. Yeah, it's a solid bowl at the bottom. So it's got fuel in it, in the carb from the last time I ran it. I don't know why this thing's so hard to start. Contact. This really highlights the intermittent and frustrating nature of this thing. It almost started right up. And even with the second try, this is a much easier start than typical. Contact. camera out it runs better than it has in quite a while it's not that cold today though you know I almost wonder what I did there is I I took the air filter out of the equation it's a new filter but that wouldn't make any sense because how would it run so well now that it's warmed up I mean if it didn't if it couldn't get enough air so even though it didn't make a lot of sense to me I wanted to check just to ensure there wasn't a mouse nest or something in the air intake that was messing things up so I took apart all the pipes from the air intake and filter housing uh, to the carburetor and just made sure there was nothing in any of them. And they all looked good. This one was kind of hard to tell for sure just looking at it, so I actually pulled a rag through it and of course it was perfectly clean. At this point I took a break from the engine. There were a couple other things that I wanted to work on. First I want to look at this telescoping chain. So there's one thing I haven't shown on camera yet on this lift. I have looked at it quite a bit, but up inside the telescope mechanism, there is a big chain, which I think you can see there. And there's no really good way to access that. And that chain is involved when it telescopes. So when the boom extends and retracts, if you look down here past these hydraulic fittings, you can see more chain. And I'm trying to figure out a way to lubricate that because it definitely needs some lube. Now, obviously you can take the entire boom apart, but um, that would probably be three weeks and an awful lot of four letter words for me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to avoid that. So the telescope doesn't seem, it seems like it struggles, uh, both going out and coming in. And part of it I think is that chain. I just sprayed it with a bunch of WD-40 as far up in as I could which wasn't much, and it was like impossible to do, even more impossible to film. Yeah, the last five feet of chain has some WD-40 on them now. I don't think it made much difference. I have an idea, but that's gonna be a job for a different day on how to lube that chain much better. Now, the wear surfaces on the beam sections of the boom. All along it, there are these wear pads and my wear pads look good. There's plenty of thickness left to them, but it still seems like it's struggling. And I notice, you know, this area is pretty smooth, but there's some areas where it's like really sticky. And I don't know if it's old grease that someone put on there, but that stuff is not supposed to be there. Uh, you really don't want sticky junk on there. So I'm just gonna clean this whole thing down with mineral spirits. I don't know what this is. It's like something sticky with gravel embedded in it. Of course, most of it where the thing slides has been pushed off, but still, it's not good. I should probably go get a different tool for this, but I'm too lazy. Does that make any sense? I sit here scraping away, working hard, because I'm too lazy. 
Some of these wear areas, especially underneath, have rusted and it's, it's fairly rough. Uh, there's no paint left there anyway, so what I'm going to do is smooth this out with a grinder and then we're going to put some lithium grease on this to protect it and help it slide easier. So I got this white lithium grease spray that I'm putting along the wear areas. I'm probably putting too much on, but man, that really makes it smooth. We'll also give it a little protection from rusting. This thing is fully extended. I've never been able to get it to retract without having to put it up in the air and use gravity to help. Let's give it a try, we'll see. If you listen here, you can hear when I hit the retract function. That didn't work, so I went up a little higher and tried again. That also didn't work. So I decided to try to take weight off the boom by dragging it on the ground. And that did work, and you can see that I only had to drag it just a few feet, and then I was able to telescope normally after that. I tried again with similar but slightly better results. It wasn't squealing and it retracted much better than it has in the past. So I'm pretty happy with that. We definitely made, uh, made progress. About a month later, I was using the lift to work on my shop. Yes, I was using a boom lift in the dark. All right, boom lift is not running and I am checking for spark. So I've got a spark light right there and right there. All right, so I tested it. I'm getting intermittent spark. It's probably the coil. Man, I hate gas engines. Diesels don't have intermittent spark. They either have compression or they don't. Uh, anyway, this is the coil. This is probably the problem. I'm also gonna replace the plug wire. So let's pull this sucker off of here. Cylinder order is one, two, three, four from right to left. And that doesn't matter to anyone but me, because I need to put it back together correctly. Okay. well. They've got everything labeled well. So there's a two right there on the coil and a two on the wire. So make, make sure they were hooked up right. Yeah, four and four. And then one and one. The Napa to the rescue. These are not labeled. So, so this is three. And then two. So I've learned, one of my patrons especially has taught me that uh, this engine is the same engine that was used in the Ford Ranger in the late 90s. So um, when I go to the auto parts store and I'm looking for stuff, all I have to do is spec like a 99 Ford Ranger and uh, 
this comes up and that's pretty helpful because I can get the parts I haven't started this thing since yesterday is it gonna start easy let's go see Unfortunately, my assessment is that made no difference whatsoever. <sighs> That's a bummer. All right, well, we'll have to keep working on this. We've unloaded the parts cannon, although I'm only buying cheap parts at this point. Uh, one thing I want to change is the PCV valve, and this might be the easiest auto repair part I'll ever replace, if I'm not mistaken. So it's on the other end of this hose that goes into the intake manifold. It's basically a, a valve uh, that allows crankcase gases from blow-by to go back into the intake and yeah there it is <sighs> that's crazy so yeah I think there's supposed to be a spring in there that holds that valve up and it's so yeah that's no good yeah see it the springs holding that not sure that's really my problem but the valve at least did need to be replaced and all you do is just push it down into the hole. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the easiest part I've ever replaced. Now the next one's not going to be so easy. So just changing that PCV valve, I do not see that it could fix the hard starting issue, but Every time I replace a part, I just want to see if I notice any difference. It's nice to know if there was something wrong with it. So let's see what happens when we try to start. So this is the part I want to change now. It has one wire connection and one bolt. This is the crank sensor. This essentially sends a signal to the brain box telling it how fast the engine is turning over and it's also able to determine the timing from this. This is a, a common problem with this engine. If this is going bad, you're gonna be getting intermittent spark. It's gonna make it run wrong. And you know, it could depend, be temperature dependent, who knows. So I wanna replace this thing. One bolt, one connector, shouldn't be that hard. The problem is my access it is no bueno. So that part I can touch, but I can't see. My fingertip is on it right now. Right there. And I imagine you have a much better view of it than I have ever had. So there's just no room in here at all. It's gonna be hard to film for that matter. I mean, taking the radiator off and everything. Honestly, I think this belt tensioner is the primary thing in my way. So I'm going to take the belt off. I'm going to take that off and it's kind of like right behind there. So let's see how that goes. made the bolt long enough that it's gonna hit the uh, the basket before I get it out I mean is that necessary come on now okay. connector looks good the bolt of course is gonna be in the most difficult place to reach Yep, right there. God. I actually have my socket on there. I was able to look up like behind this. I loosened this so that I could kind of peek behind it and I could see the bolt, but there's just no way I can film this. Um, but that socket wrench right here is actually on the bolt. So hopefully I can undo it now. One click at a time.
10 years later. Okay. All right, I think I need to start taking things apart. So alternator's easy. Let me pop that off of there. Then this entire bracket, not a big deal, except the coolant is running through it. But you know, I can still probably shift it out of the way, but it's also attached to this, which is the engine mount. So I'm gonna need to get up underneath here and support the engine. Hold on, undo one bolt. This has to come out. I'm pretty sure there's just an O-ring and it pushes up into the water pump housing. And so if I pull that out, it's gonna start gushing coolant everywhere. So I get to drain the coolant. Well, draining the coolant, like everything on this engine is on the far side where it's hard to get to and even hard to get a drainage pan under there. <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of resigned to they're just uh everything's gonna be difficult here. I've got the trusty yogurt container and we'll just do it one one little container at a time. Awesome. There it is. That. That's what I've been after. Had it loose and everything. That sensor is getting a signal from these teeth as they go by on that gear and sending it to the brain box, which allows it to set the timing and know the RPM and all that good stuff. After you get the bolt out, you should just be able to pull that sensor out of there, but mine wouldn't budge. Surprised? That thing might be breaking. Ah, snapped it off. Man, that's gonna be fun. So this is basically a piece of metal going right down the center that's encased in epoxy. So when you try to drill it down the center, the drill bit wanders off to the side. And I tried for some time, I finally got a screw in it and grabbed it with the slide hammer. And then ripped the screw out. I have got this screw. I tried this already, but uh, with a shorter screw. And I'm gonna screw it in there with a washer to push against the housing and hopefully pull it out. But so far, every time I've tried that, the threads just strip out. It's fun. And yet again, I'd rather be working on my Johnson. <laughs> Am I going to snap the bolt off or just pull the threads? Something happened. Well, it yanked the threads and a few pieces with it. We'll just keep taking it out piece by piece. Which is exactly what I did, and it's actually kind of interesting to me. I would have sworn it took me between two and three hours to get this piece out. I look back at the footage, it took me exactly one hour. Time flies when you're having fun, and man, it drags on when you aren't. It is out. I want to see how tight this one is going in. Yeah, see, it goes right in. Click. Start thinking about putting this thing back together now. Sensor plugged in. There's the bolt, and then if you look up in there, that's where I'm gonna push this tube in just a second. Alternator still works, but those uh, bearings sound a little crusty. If it was harder to get to, I would do more, but 
this thing is the easiest thing to service on the machine so I'll run it till it breaks I flushed the cooling system. I haven't run it yet, but right now it's just full of water. The question is, is this thing gonna run right now? I'll tell you, I'm kind of pessimistic on this machine. I've tried so many things. I kind of feel like it won't, but you know, you just gotta keep trying. Like when I was fixing the excavator, I knew I had it. I mean, I was 99% sure the whole time. Once I got to the swivel joint, I, I found the, the bad seal. Yeah, that's much easier to put in the time. Here I've put in a bunch of time and I just think when we go to start it, it's not gonna make it darn bit of difference. I'm gonna go hit the button, you watch the engine. That might have fixed it. So I changed the platform, it's idling very well. Sometimes though it would do this, so I can't say that's a fix just yet. I can bump the throttle by hand. There's a little hesitation there. All right, we're idling. I'm about to step on the pedal on the platform, which will cause it to throttle up. It usually spews black smoke. Not quite as bad. Seems a little weaker than it should be, but I think it's definitely running better with that new crank sensor. I'm gonna have to let it sit overnight and I'll try it in the morning and see if it starts up easy again. All right, next day, let's see how this baby does. That's way better. So I shut it down and then needed to restart it just a few minutes later. How about that? I like it. So I wanted to revisit the rope coiling tutorial that I showed um, because I said it's also good for extension cords. I feel I didn't entirely explain it the best. Obviously you can do it exactly how I showed. You can do it on your neck. For whatever reason, I don't like doing extension cords on my neck. They're usually not that heavy. If it's a 50 foot cord especially, it's just not a big deal. I do it in my hand, but it's the exact same coiling method, but I just wanted to show you. So again, a thumb, and then this is the loose end. And then I turn my hand so that now I've got a loop here and then make another one. And then I turn my hand the other way so the loop goes on the other side. And then you just go back and forth with your hand. So the thumb is towards me, thumbs away from me. And this one you do have to hold the cord, but like I said, with extension cords, it's usually not a big deal. If you want to do it on your neck, of course, that's fine. And then to finish up a cord, just wrap it around a couple of times. And go up through. You can either bring all the way through or you can do the bite like this and kind of lock it in. I was surprised how much interest there was in that uh, section of that video. I thought everyone was gonna click off by then. <laughs> well, it just doesn't end. I just ran this thing and from what I can tell, the coolant is not circulating. And of course, I was just in there, right beside the thermostat housing. Didn't think about it. So I'm gonna need to take this back apart and put a new thermostat in it. And while I'm in there, I may very well put a new water pump in it. I'd really like for this thing to be reliable for a long time and me not to have to worry about stuff, so. So basically how it works, there's a water pump here and a thermostat, which is just a thermal switch. Uh, when it gets hot, it opens and allows water to flow through the engine and the, through the radiator. As the engine gets hot, You'll feel this is warm because the heat rises up here, 
but this should also get warm. That means the water is circulating through the engine and coming back to the radiator. The, the lower pipe should get warm if the water's circulating. And I ran this plenty of time, it's not getting warm. So, need to address that. So the thermostat's right behind here. This is the water pump. As far as I can tell, that fan is attached from the front and I can't even fit my hand in there. I really hope if I unbolt this water pump, I'm gonna be able to work it out. Oh, it doesn't look like it though. Oh. Oh wow, look at that. Just broke my socket. That's nice. All right, I'm starting to think she might be cursed. All right, right there is the thermostat. Should pop out of there. Yeah, that thing feels really stiff. Don't think that thing's open for a while. Here's the new one. Opens very easily, nice and smooth. So yeah, that definitely needed to happen. Okay, moment of truth. Can I get this out of here? think so. Well, maybe if I just take these off, get that cowl out of the way. Caution, fan blade. Contact with fan blade may cause minor or moderate injury. Clearly those were times that were a little less uh, litigious than they are now. That today would say this will cause serious injury or death. No minor or moderate injury. No one cares about that. So this bolt on the other side, this bracket is right in front of it. Come on, baby. Come on. Ah, yes. Got it. Got two. If it's annoying that you can't see anything, rest assured, neither can I. I'm not even trying. It's all by feel. It's out. So now that should, in theory, there we go. Come back and allow this. Still not gonna let me. Are you serious? I birthed it. Well, now that I have the pump in my hands, can feel the bearings and look at the impeller, it really didn't look too bad, but I'm putting a new one in anyway. I'm pretty sure the coolant not circulating was all due to the thermostat.
be nice if my elbow would bend the wrong direction without pain, of course. So there's the new thermostat. Okay, I'm gonna fill this radiator up with water and we're gonna give this thing a run, see how it does. Let's see if this thing is easy to start. I still haven't 100% verified that the starting issue is fixed, but I think it is. Then I heard a new clicking sound. Never heard that before. All right, she's definitely cursed. <laughs> this is getting to be like a comedy. All right, now the alternator is sparking like mad. And uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't do anything to the, uh, to the alternator. It didn't get wet. Oh boy. Well, that's an easy part to change. This is what happens when you buy something that is 26 years old and has been sitting for who knows how long. Just every little thing that can go wrong is gonna go wrong. <laughs> but what about the water pump and the thermostat? Before it would get so hot here that I couldn't touch it and this would be ice cold. And now this is a little bit warm and obviously I can touch this. And I just, I just ran it for a while. So notice a little difference. Very good. Now I just need a new alternator. <laughs> Doesn't sound great. This back here is like a voltage regulator. So I'm gonna take that off and I'm also gonna open up alternator and see if I can see the bearings. Apparently these are pretty good quality alternators from back in the day. They're not quite as disposable as the ones today. So if I can, fix this and keep it working, that would be a good move, I think. So those are the brushes. That looks no bueno. These are the contacts the brushes slide on. Can you imagine why it would be sparking? Yeah, there's nothing I can do with that. I didn't bother putting much time into trying to take it apart further. It obviously needs to be replaced. So, uh, you know, one of the good things about working on an old vehicle like my dump truck is when you go to the parts store and not only can they get it, but they can get the exact part you need and they have it in stock. That's awesome. That sounds a little better. And check this out. Motorcraft. I mean, it's the exact same alternator. Everything is, is identical. Even came with the right pulley. Now I remember the days when you could buy a new alternator for 50 or 60 bucks. Those are long gone. This was 160. Not too bad considering it's a, it's a real alternator. You know, it's not some cheap piece of junk. This should last for the rest of the life of the machine, so. That would have to be the easiest alternator install I've ever had. I think we're done for now. There is more I want to do to this machine, but for now, I think we're, uh, we're good. Let's see if it'll give us an easy start after sitting here overnight and most of the day. Oh, might help if you put it on ground. <laughs> Better than it was, and that's a cold 
Yeah, I don't know if I ever explained in this video, that's the nature of using a boom lift. You start it, you position it, you shut it down, you start it back up, you're constantly starting and stopping the machine, so being able to start is critical. Well, now that I've got this thing running, I've got a big job I need to do with it, so let's get to work. That settles it. Definitely cursed. It's been raining some. The ground is a little soft. The wheels have sunken in. Yeah, that's probably the worst one. These are flat free tires, so none of these tires are flat. Yeah, that one's pretty pretty deep too. Two thousand years later. Ground's too soft this time of year. It would just dig in, make ruts, get stuck. Yeah, but obviously you can tell this is a very important job or I wouldn't be going to all this trouble. See that thing start? The ground's a little harder over here, so I think just doing planks like this will work. Man, this is a lot of work. Alright, let's go get this high and highly critical job done.
So this is 60 feet high. I don't know if that comes across in the video. We're up there. Well, you don't like it? They're down there scoffing at me. All right, let's see if this baby will start. This is where you really need it to start. And that's why I fixed it. That star looks good up there. get a sense of how big that thing is. I think in the in the video it just doesn't look near as tall as it is. It is 60 feet tall and that's to the bottom of the star and that star is taller than I am. And another thing, if you've gotten to this point in the video and you haven't given this a thumbs up after all of this, I don't know what to say about you. So Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Festivus or whatever this time of year is for you. I hope you have a good time. And we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.